All right. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me here. I have Ashley Sparling here with us. Ashley is a mentor over at Game Art Institute. Just had a really big launch, and uh, I wanted to bring him in uh, and, and talk about that launch, about the process, about the games. And um, and then, Ashley, you've also got something coming up pretty quick. So I don't know, depending on when people watch this, but you have a class coming up, right? Yes, I do. So hi, everyone. So it's cool that you can all join us here. So oh, uh, some, sorry, something started popping up. Oh, hello, person. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, Lawrence. How are you? <laughs> all right. And so now, uh, the, why don't, for people who, uh, some people here might have had you as a mentor, but tell me what you do at uh, Ubisoft and... Okay. Uh, what that entails. Okay, so I'm a senior character artist over Ubisoft Quebec, and we have just uh, released uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which uh, has been a two and a half year production for me. So I started uh, quite early on in production, which was kind of cool. So I got to kind of help out with uh, some pipeline stuff. And um, yeah, so we, we kind of break broke a few uh, boundaries actually well it's I say me it's like the whole team when I say me uh, it's not just me there's a whole mm -hmm. 400 of us um, doing this um, but yeah we were trying uh, trying some new tech that um, kind of hasn't really been explored like um, with uh, layering systems and um, kind of things like that so being able to layer clothing on top of each other and um yeah ov obviously we still do all the whole thing of um sculpting sculpting our models and um texturing although the texturing was a little bit different from how everybody kind of knows texturing to be um i'll i'll uh, fire up some characters and i can kind of talk a little bit more um about them if that's if that's cool or... Yeah, well, tell me, um, so you say senior character artist, and I want to, because this is something I always love to drill down, it's different everywhere, but what does senior mean versus lead versus junior versus all that stuff? What does it mean in terms of what do you do? Okay, so as a senior character artist, um, you obviously get to do all of the cool artwork stuff like we see here, but um, as a senior, we, um, I, I, um, kind of mentor um juniors so if they need mm -hmm. help um also if we have any outsourcing that we have to do um i've um kind of had uh, had a part in uh, giving feedback to outsourcers and helping them if they need help and yeah uh, for me one of my main roles that i did um as a senior at uh, Ubisoft was I dealt with um, Montpellier, which is uh, another office, um, mm -hmm. and they did all of our cinematics. So I had to provide them, I had to make sure that they were provided with all of the characters that they needed for for what they needed to do. So if there was something that needed to be, to be made, then I would build the character for them. I obviously had to because that, when I first started doing it, um, I had to do a little bit of scheduling, make sure that they had everything they need in the correct time timeline. So it's not really managing. It's It was a little bit of managing as a senior, but um, as you said, it's completely different in whatever studio you go to. Um, but for me to, to make sure that my job with doing the cinematic stuff was in line, I had to do some like um charts type of thing so it's not always the most interesting stuff but it's uh, it helps uh, it helps them get the um get all the information that they need and all of the content that they need as well um also being a senior you kind of get to help um develop the pipeline and if there's like a really cool technique that you find um you share it with the team and that can get implemented as well so i kind of like to work out um quick ways to do things so then you have more yeah. you're able to make more content cool so what is um, you guys launched uh you're it's out um mm -hmm. 
what's is there like a couple of things one, one thing that happened on the way to launching that it's just like a nightmare something you had to deal with production did you have to go into crunch time extra <laughs> hours did you know did you have to do some redos on texture or redo topology like what kind of problems can arise and what did arise as you were doing this so um as people know with assassin's creed there is uh, a lot of bugs that happen <laughs> so um yeah. Uh, there's, there's actually one's quite a funny one. Actually, we had a um, we had a bear a bear um, model, and uh, we okay. kind of use um, this is more animation side than like our type of thing, but it's kind of funny. So um, we loaded up the bear model, and somebody had accidentally put the wrong rig on the bear. And because it's all with um, their character builder and, and that, it kind of used um, it used a chicken rig on the bear. So we had this um, we had this <laughs> bear running around looking like a chicken. So <laughs> that had to be fixed. <laughs> so um, nice. but um, but we get we get things like that happen all the time, like the the face rig because it was a new system for the uh, for the face rig with morphs and things. That um, there was a time that it broke and literally it just caved the faces in. And <laughs> um, again, that's more on like the rigging side of things. But um, as for like uh, doing the actual character character work, you get um, sometimes the lots. Um, don't display correctly so you would have to redo an LOD um, also we for crunch uh, we did have to crunch um, mm -hmm. but it was um, it's hard because I kind of crunched when we were doing um, before we did uh, we launched at E3 so that's when I did a yeah. lot of my crunch but there are people on the team who crunched at the end but it all depends like what you what you're delegated um but it's it's not the worst crunch that i've uh, i've ever done <laughs> so uh it was okay <laughs> so got it all right so long hours um what would did you work on what were the part the models the the stuff so um, I got to, <laughs> I worked on a lot of old men that got killed in the games. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so um, I got to work on the, because it's a little bit difficult, different because you don't just get a, a full character to do because a lot of the, we've got literally thousands and thousands of characters in the game. You're creating, mm -hmm. um, you're creating assets that can be swapped with things. So even though, I mean, I was quite lucky with um, uh, Pericles here that I literally got to make the whole costume. The only thing that I didn't get to make was the, uh, was the beard, but everything else, I got to make the whole thing, which is cool. Um, the body is like a, a base, base mesh so when we get given um, a character we um, we use like a, a relaxed t-posed mesh so we're not actually creating uh, mm. a body mesh from scratch when working in the industry you kind of don't have time to remake a character all the time especially with a game like this so we tend to um, we tend to share those those type of things so um so yeah so with the whole um swapping clothing uh if i have something here maybe so you can't really see it but uh, this this drapery here is the exact same drapery drapery here but swapped over and changed different texture so everything in the game can be worn on every single character so you're kind of working on separate assets so even though i got given a concept which was make the um commander but there will be assets in this that um were shared so for example the the skirts it was an asset that i made but not specifically for this but it could be swapped if that makes sense <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. so it, it's a lot of um when you're working on a big rpg game 
your it's hard to make just one full character because everything needs to be used by everyone else and it's a good work in practice to um to to work like that because you don't want to end up with like 20 spartan helmets that look exactly like that that's got a different crest normally you'd yeah well what we done was we made one helmet and then we changed the changed the crests on them so it saves a lot of time because we don't get a massive amount of time to create these content this content um the most fun part that we actually got to do i mean i i got to create a lot of heads and we're super super lucky because um we didn't use any scan data for these that we actually got to sculpt them all from scratch which is super super cool because i uh, i love doing head models <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so all right and these things are just these are just beautiful so you know run me through software you were using you used zbrush you used what else so we use zbrush um we do use 3d max um mm -hmm. i don't really use it i basically create everything in um like all my low polys i do in maya and then i exported it over to 3d max and then so it could be exported into the engine um we also use substance painter um yeah. i'm using marmoset to bake and we use marvelous designer as well so um and there's uh, a few like in-house tools that we use like for example for the hair um we have a special in-house um hair tool that was created mm -hmm. by one of our um one of our riggers which is really cool because yeah. it's it's uh hair's a pain <laughs> so but it um, is. um i know the um the environment guys and the texture guys are using substance designer and i've actually had a go at it um this week no last week sorry and man that thing is powerful it's pretty crazy yeah uh i i wish i had knew it knew it before i didn't done some of these characters because things like doing like these um these scales and things you can literally yeah. randomize them it, it's uh, i need a crash course on uh, on it because it was just me playing about but um yeah i think um I, I think substance designer is something that's gonna end up being put into our pipeline so yeah, i'm quite looking forward to it because i quite like learning new software thing. yeah tell me about the specs on some of these characters too how many how many polygons how many maps how many um so yada, yada. we we got um so each uh, each asset when it gets broken up um we kind of have a, its own texture we we kind of work big so we'd work at a for example i'd i'd try and do everything as big as i could so a 4k texture for everything but okay. that doesn't that doesn't get shown in game the reason why i did a 4k texture is so you can you can see these nice looking renders <laughs> so it's more of an artist uh oh i need to do it big but um normally the helmet would crunch down to it was be about a uh, 1k 1k by 512 so it's um not a square texture mm -hmm. um the so that would be one texture then the chest piece and shoulder be uh, shoulder armor would be a another texture then mm -hmm. the arms would be another texture. The the straps are another texture. The cloth is another texture, and yada yada yada. <laughs> so um, the reason why we do this is because if we put this all on one uh, one texture sheet, when it would be swapped, say say you wanted a different helmet for this guy, it would just yeah. be it'd be a lot cheaper um like memory wise for the game engine to just swap that over so you can have instead of having like one big 4k texture you can have loads of little textures to um that aren't uh, memory hem heavy so if it's not being shown it's not being used so it's not using memory 
in the engine. Um, for poly counts, um, the poly count changed quite a lot actually, and we're this is something that we we talk about because we're working on the um, uh, DLC stuff at the moment, and we've actually upresed our um, upresed our armor, uh, upresed our poly count. But um, yeah. normally it was about for the all in all uh, for NPC characters like this, it probably was about. 25 25k polys um but uh, when you get a character which is this is mainly for the main character to wear you can we got about 40 40k i think that's not that's just the armor itself that's not the uh, body the uh, the actual body itself is is really really high i think it's about ooh, 15 to 20 20k so that's a lot of polys <laughs> so um so, so what does that come to total then four so we'll say 40 plus 20 40 56 60k and then you've got i reckon i reckon all in all once you have everything and eyes and stuff it's probably around about 70k for this is only for like the main character so yeah. when it's uh when it's the npc characters the background characters it's normally half yeah and it never gets shown the high poly never gets shown <laughs> it's only for like cinematic -y pieces got it all right so about 60k um mm -hmm. that's for the main characters how many textures did you you say oh so off the top of my head <laughs> so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten including the eyes eleven including the hair so eleven textures so okay. that's a lot you're of you're not worried about draw calls yeah or that's just it's all optimized for that uh yeah everything once everything gets in it gets mit mapped and lauded so um it's as I said, it works out uh, cheaper to do it this way than it would be to make have um, loads of big massive textures. And if, right. when you've got like a oh, hundred characters on screen with 4K textures, it's uh, it will chug up the chug up the engine. Where because everything's uh, smaller, it's broken down smaller and when the lods mm -hmm. come in so anything that's really close to the screen would probably be about a 512 texture but then everything in the background just gets blurred out to like a 64 bit <laughs> so so it's um it's it sounds like a lot of textures um but because what we're using it for it's more beneficial so how did you get into games? You've told me your story, and I know you're going to I, I, you know, save some of that, of course, for the webinar that you have on Saturday and all of that if you want. But, okay. but tell me, how did you get started in this? Because, you know, I, I remember you telling the story about that drive. Yep. <laughs> so, well, originally, um, I didn't want to get into uh, video games originally. I wanted to do yeah. uh, special effects makeup. And okay. uh, when I went Spalding to uni and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I mean, when I was younger, I was always, um, I was always making things um, like models, and I think I kind of get it from my my dad because my dad was trained mm -hmm. as a, a carpenter, and he was always trying to build things with me, and he would we'd spend all day like crafting swords out of wood where we'd, like sand nice. them all down. It was it was awesome. Like my and my dad did drawing and painting, so I kind of got it all from him really and so i mm -hmm. always knew that i wanted to go I, I always knew i wanted to do something character based and special effects makeup was what i wanted to originally do so i went to uni i went to go and look at a few universities and they were like you know what don't do the special effects stuff you want to get into the to the digital stuff and so I was like, okay, I want to get into the digital stuff. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I ended up going to a university and we had this 
really awesome uh, teacher. Well, at first I started off doing um, uh, uh, animation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but then we had a class with, um, he was a uh, uh, art director from Sony. And uh, we had this project where we got to make a um, like a, a a creature or a character, and I did this man bat thing, and um, he pulled he pulled me over and uh, at at the end of submission, and he said to me, um, you know, have you ever thought about going into games? I was like, nah, not really. I don't really play games. You know, it's not really something I'm interested in. And he was like, mm -hmm. well you don't have to play games to work in games. And I was like, okay. And he was like, because I, I really like your uh, characters and I think you'd be really suited for like a character artist in, in games. I was like, okay. So if uh, if the art director of Sony <laughs> is uh, telling me to be a character artist in games, I, you know, better give it a go, you know. So I ended up changing courses and going into his course. I was, super excited because oh, he was an amazing drawer and he knew his anatomy and oh, he, he was just so cool like he he was always inspiring so so that was the first year and then the, I was um in the summer I was like getting really excited because I'm going to be starting second year with this art director as my tutor and then he sent me a message and said hey just to let you know um i'm leaving the university and i'm going back to sony to teach uh, to to work and i was like ah crap <laughs> so uh <laughs> we didn't we didn't have a uh, we didn't have a teacher uh, to start off with and um we we eventually got one and he, you know he was still trying to get used to being our teacher and you know it was, it was hard because he came from Maya and we were learning Max and it was just uh it's you know he he done his best to, to what he could could do you know for what he had but um I always felt like it just needed to be a little bit more um and I in the end I just started looking looking online for courses and tutorials and I, I needed something a bit more advanced than what was being taught I think that was yeah. the that was the problem so anyway university finishes uh, we had like a big open day thing and so you know getting all my portfolio ready sending it out to every single company and we had industry people come in so I was talking to people and a month went by nothing another month went by nothing another month went by <laughs> nothing and I was still trying to practice and I was um I was working as well as a as a carer um and carer uh, as a as a carer so um uh, What's that? oh uh, so I I worked with a guy who who was disabled and so oh, okay yeah. like caring for him it wasn't like washing mm -hmm. him or anything like that it was um he was trying to get more um more more independent so he had a little house on the side of his parents so I used to go and take him to the cinema and do cooking with him and you know just mm -hmm. like trying to be more independent so I mean it's not a terrible job but it's not computer games <laughs> so right um so it got to about three months and literally no one was touching me with a barge pole and even though I was still trying to practice and learn anatomy and I'd, I went to one interview and it's for an architectural company and it that it's they were pretty much like no we do <laughs> they got me in for an interview and they were like oh no we don't do characters I was like well I don't do buildings oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> So, Did you see the portfolio? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, so um, in the end, I I decided, you know what, I don't want to, I don't want to fall out of doing this. Um, so I decided I'm gonna go and do an MA. So back to university, I went, uh, signed up for the MA, started doing it, 
and um, then I was started to do one of uh, the projects that we had to do and I just thought oh you know what I'll just check my emails because I'm terrible at checking my emails I'm I, I do it like check it like 20 times in an hour <laughs> I'm that bad to check it like addicted to checking my emails so mm -hmm. I checked my emails and I was like saw this thing and it was like oh fancy coming in for a chat I was like what the heck is this so I clicked on this email and it said hi we've just seen your portfolio um was wondering if you wanted to come in for a for a chat and I was like huh so I looked to see where it was, and it was um, it was uh, uh, Rare Limited, which is owned by Microsoft. They did the old mm -hmm. Donkey Kong games, and I was like, "Is this what? Is this is this right?" You know, I I just couldn't believe that I'd been sent this email. So I I I knew where Rare was. I didn't know exactly where it was, but I knew it was up in Birmingham area. And so I messaged him back. I was like, oh, thank you so much for contacting me. I'd love to come down. And they were like, oh, cool. Um, yeah, how about uh, the end of the week uh, on Friday? I was like, OK. Uh, and this was on Wednesday. So I was like, <laughs> uh, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, OK, cool. Uh, 10 o'clock. I was like, yeah, 10 o'clock is cool. Yeah. And then, so I quickly ran, rang up my parents and I was like, uh, oh my gosh, I've got, I've got an interview at a game studio. And they were like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Where is it? Where is it? And I looked and it was like eight hours away, uh, seven, eight hours away. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't have a car. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, uh, my my parents said, you know what, we'll we'll drive down there. You know, we'll we'll all go down there, and uh, you know, we'll m make a day of it. So um, so uh, my uh, I should say my my brother, he's um, he's older than me, and he's he's disabled as well. So um, we all like jumped in the car, and um, we took this journey. Um, my dad used to be a dr um, a a uh, truck driver, a uh, lorry driver. So he he's used to the roads and he knew kind of where it was, but um, he's not the fastest of drivers. <laughs> but you know, it was uh, it was it was a cool journey, and you know, we stopped off at McDonald's and stuff. And anyway, anyway, we got um, I got to this uh, place. It's called Twycross, and it's. Mm -hmm literally we drove past where it is it's literally a place and it's just fields full of fields farmers fields trees and there's nothing there literally nothing there and we we're like is this the right place we we're like oh, there were some gates back there i don't know if that's it because it's saying it's a little bit further down so anyway we drove back and we saw these massive gates with a big are uh, on the um on the thing i was like oh mm -hmm. this, this is it it's like literally it was like in between these trees so i jumped out of the car and i pushed on the tannoy and i was like hi my name's ashley sparling i'm here for an interview and i'm like oh sure come on in you know and so like these gates opened and it literally was this road going up they had like a massive pond with swans in and literally you like drove up this like path with like trees and like you see squirrels running across and then it was about oh, not half a mile maybe quarter of a mile on this road and then you got to the building and ah oh, this old well it was it was an old barn but they modernized it and ah oh, it just looked awesome my eyes are like almost like popping out my head because uh, and like a massive smile so went in and had my interview and um they asked me uh did i know maya and i was like oh dang oh dang i don't i don't know maya and um yeah. uh, they i just like smiled i was like yeah of course i know maya and I was thinking, oh, gosh, I don't know, Maya, do they know I'm lying? Ah. 
you know so um so in the end uh i came out and they said yeah we'll uh we'll uh it was only meant to be a half an hour interview and it ended up being like an hour and a half or something and mm-hmm. once you get me talking i can't stop i think it's my nerves <laughs> so uh i came out and well uh they said okay we'll uh we'll contact you um uh the beginning of next week i was like okay cool and he was like oh you know what we we like you we want to offer you the we want to offer you the job and they offered me the job literally on the spot and uh i uh i just couldn't believe it i just literally all of that worrying and self-doubt of oh i'm not good enough i'm never going to get a job in the industry all of my friends yeah. are getting jobs and you know i'm just this piece of crap on the side of the road watching everybody get jobs and i'm just going to be swept away into the gutter or something you know and all of that just kind of like went in that one second of you know what we're going to offer you the job and i just i just came out beaming and my parents just knew what that meant and uh it was it was just awesome it was it was a really really awesome feeling to to finally get offered a job as a character artist so yeah (laughs) so that's uh that's how i basically got into the industry so and been there ever since <laughs> so. i love that you know because it's it takes one job it's that one job the first yeah. one right oh uh, that's yeah what it takes because after that you you know you you're proven it's just like oh yeah okay you're you're in the industry i remember yeah. one of my uh, students larry came down he got his first job he'd been freelance and he got his first job at um Sony PlayStation San Diego. I'd actually oh. emailed the people that he was interviewing and I'd been like, Larry's great. You got to hire him. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Normally people don't listen to me, but this time they listen to me and they hire him and they're like, oh, that's awesome. He comes over, man. And it's like, you know, it's night and day, the life, because before this, you know, some you're either living with your parents or you're living somewhere super cheap. You know, like I was living in a, um, in an efficiency in Koreatown paid $500 a month to basically have my kitchen, my bedroom, my living room, and, um, and my patio all be the same room. (laughs) The only, the only extra room I had was a bathroom. And, um, you know, so we all had that now, you know, what is it, what do you tell students who are looking you know, or in that position, because, you know, this is a very inspirational story to hear. So what do you tell them now to remind them that it's just, they're just that first job away? So, I mean, I know a lot of people, uh, I get a lot of uh, students uh, message me and it's like, how do you get into the industry? How do you get into the industry? Mm-hmm. And uh, there is no magic button. There is no magic wand. And it's, I think a lot of it is to do with networking um, because people can see your work and, but they can't see what you're doing behind the scenes and who you are behind your work. And personality, I think is a, is a, is a big key uh, to being able to go and speak to these people and show them who you are. Um, And obviously there's the whole hard working and, you know, you guys have heard this all all before, and it, there really is no magic magic wand. It's one, it's right place, right time. Two, meeting people, meeting people in the industry, going to like events like Zebrush Summit, and you know the the meetups at SIGGRAPH, and actually going to speak to these people because. Um, after after I had uh, my interview at, at Rare, my first job, I, I said to them, "Oh, how how did you how did you even find me? Because I never applied." And mm-hmm. they said, "Oh, um, we got your business card from one of our employees who you spoke to." I was like, "Oh, okay." Oh, and that wow, was that's somebody that they literally found my business card on the desk and they just happened to need a character artist at that time. And <laughs> I, I really wish that there, there was like, oh, you need to do this, 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 this to be able to get people to get jobs. But I, 
it's really sad to say, but it's, it is just luck and never giving up. If you want it that bad, like just keep going at it because somebody somebody's going to give and be like, you know what, we'll give this guy or girl a go, you know, and then bam, that's it. Your, your key to you've got the key to that front door and then after that the world's your oyster you know you can my my mum always used to say it's it's easier to find a job once you're in a job so yeah. it's I, I really really wish that there was like this magic thing that I could say that is going to give everybody a job but <laughs> it's so sad but it's, there's not it's just hard work and right time right place and meeting people don't don't be a hermit in your bedroom (laughs) yeah and we'd almost like i'd almost rather it not be that way in this age but one of my students adam got a job and they just found his stuff online he i mean i've got students well you know the thing is is i think a lot of students don't apply yeah that's one of the things that's on my mind is people don't apply Mm. I see this with my own students. They're just, they're waiting until they're good enough or HR, you know, HR, they got that big old list of like five years in the industry, ship 20,000 triple A game. Yeah. Be a rock star, be able to cook crepes, you know, whatever. Right. Just all that stuff. And they wait and they wait and they wait. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, when you like, obviously I've seen a lot of, um, when looking for jobs and the blurb that they give and it's normally like oh yeah junior character artist three years experience that's not a (laughs) junior come on man like there's people out there that need a chance like to be honest like even if it says senior i would i would apply just give it a go who what have you got to lose the worst thing that happens is they say okay no sorry okay all right, then I will remember that I applied to that person. And then next time, three years down the line, when I'm in the industry and I want to work there, I'll apply again. Because it sounds sad. Then they're never going to remember who they they send so many rejection emails out there. They're never going to remember if you've applied for a for a senior character artist when you're when you're a junior. They're not going to remember that. So Give it a go. They don't track that. They don't remember that. They don't. They don't have like a database. You know. No, it's just you might as well just give it a go and see what happens. And I think you'll find you'll be surprised. To be honest, that, that's like the main thing. Just taking that leap and just doing it. Just try it. As I said, what have you got to lose? <laughs> so. Totally. Yeah, that is so awesome to hear. And uh, hold on one sec, because I want to see if there is um, any questions in there. Um, Corinne is asking about making, uh, you made modular clothing for Assassin's Creed for these characters, right? You mentioned modular, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, So everything's done to one scene, one one scene scale and and all of that. Um, Is stuff like that relevant for us when we're building our portfolio? What's important in a portfolio when you're looking at it? So, I mean, I don't think it's, I mean, if you want to do like a a nice, if, oh, if you look at the um, the CD project stuff um, when they were just having like torso, torso assets and things like that. I love looking at that stuff. It's, I'm, I'm like dribbling over it being, oh, I wish I could be that good. But um, I mean, I think it's when when you're doing a portfolio, there's going to be aspects that you're really good at and aspects that you're you're not as good at. Um, but if they see something that sparks in your portfolio, whether it's like, oh, you know what? They did like a really good velvet material. Oh, you know what? We, we need... We're, we're doing like, I, d- I don't know, characters with velvet materials on. You know what? This person kind of knows that. So we'll we'll get them in. We'll go and speak to them and see, see if they want a job, basically. But as in portfolios, I, th- I think having full, full characters, whether it's mod... To be honest, you don't need to really worry about the modular stuff until you're actually in the industry. If you want to do like a really nice jacket, then 
yeah doing really nice jacket show off that you can do um uh, folds in cloth and you know how like leather works and because it's not they're they're not going to be like oh you know oh this person can only do a jacket where if you have other things in your um portfolio so head sculpts well when i say head sculpts i would i would recommend uh, it I, I really get annoyed when I hear people when they talk about portfolios and they say, oh, you know, they must have full characters rendered, lighting, textured. And it, it really annoys me a little bit. And because like sometimes you don't have the time to, to do that. It, it's good if you have a couple of pieces that are like fully rendered, fully textured, like a full character, but I really don't see any harm in putting some head sculpts in or, you know, just putting sculpts in. It all depends what you want to, what you're aiming for, really. Um, another thing, uh, I'm going to say this, another thing that really, really annoys me when, um, when I hear people talk about what should be in a portfolio and stuff like that is, because I've had this to me for me, I've had this said to me and mm -hmm. it annoyed the heck out of me is when you when you go and speak to somebody and you have a review or something they go oh yeah yeah you know you've got some really good work but you haven't got any children in your portfolio <laughs> uh, okay or oh you don't have a a dog with a um, with a top hat <laughs> Great, that's perfect. very specific you know okay <laughs> okay i can't do a dog but i've done an orangutan or i've done other animals <laughs> and when it, it 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 just annoys me that people expect or you haven't got a marine in your thing or one thing about portfolios i have to say is yes do if you're if you're going for a game ready if you're going for a games job you do need to show that you can do it so you know good topology good uvs good texturing can they do heads have they had a go at hair which hair is a completely crazy thing anyway but can they do that can they can they can they show that they can do that because that's what i want to see but for the rest of it, whatever the topic is, just do what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're making artwork for yourself. And if you're not creating something that you like, then what the heck are you doing? And you'll find as well, if you if you make the stuff that you like, your artwork is even better. If you're having to, somebody saying to you, oh yeah, you haven't got any old ladies. And you're like, oh, I don't really want to sculpt an old lady, but I'm going to sculpt an old lady. It's going to come out crap because you don't want to sculpt it. Where if you're like, you know what? I want to sculpt. I'm just looking around my room. Uh, I've got loads mm -hmm. of Batman figures. I want to make Batman. Oh, I want to make Batman. Yeah. Oh, I'm really enjoying yeah. this. I'm loving this. Oh, I'm getting the pose in there. I'm getting the dynamic lighting in there. It's going to show. It's going to show you that you've really enjoyed creating that and doing the whole process. Yeah, also, totally. Also as well, something I try to do when I'm creating personal pieces is I try to give myself something that I don't normally do. So for one, if I have problems doing hair, then I'll be like, okay, the main purpose of this is I want to get a good hair out of it. So I'll obviously do the whole character, but then I'll spend a little bit longer doing that one thing that I'm not very good at. And then each time you do a character, you're just going to improve, 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 improve. So, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of went off on one a little bit there. But uh... I love it. No, it's yeah. perfect. It's great, you know, because your story is a very inspirational story, right? You know, you went through the same problem. A lot of people I talk to, a lot of my students, a lot of people that are out there, you know, it's like you did the work. You learned. It took forever to get that job for somebody to give you that break mm -hmm. and now you just launched assassin's creed um you know odyssey and you've been in this industry how long uh 10 years congratulations thank you <laughs>
<laughs> what what 10 years in the game industry taught you in terms of the industry and yourself as an artist? So um, I think I've learned a lot of things. I've, I've worked at quite a few companies now and each company that I work at, it's, it's, com it's completely different. Um, for me, uh, one of the biggest things, I mean, I, 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 I worked at a company called Fa uh, uh, Lionhead and we created, uh, we were working on Fable Legends and mm -hmm. I absolutely loved this place to death. I, I was only a contractor there and I was there for a year and a bit, but oh man, this place was, if I could stay there for the rest of my life, I, I would have stayed there because for me, it felt like a big family. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, you, you hear people say this, oh, oh, you know, my team is my family, but this really did feel like my family. You know, we all gelled together really well and, you know, I'd go out after and go for drinks with them. And it's, I, I think when you're choosing a company to work for, you need to, you need to look at the people who you're going to be working with because that plays such a massive part in in working in the games industry if you can't click with your team then it's you know you're not going to be producing the best work you you get you know there'll be you, you'll be on top of each other you know and things could get messy and so your team your team is the core of what you do because, you know, there'll be people who you work with who aren't as good as you or who need a little bit of help, which is cool because then you can teach you can teach them. But then, like, when you've got your seniors and leads and principals and it's just like you're learning off of them. And it's not till you're in the industry that your, your work will just, whoom, it'll just, like, skyrocket because you're doing it every day and with with your portfolio pieces that you do it's like okay you know i've got no time limit on this you know i'll yeah. i'll take three months if i need th if i've got three months but in the games industry your producer will come up to you and be like hey uh i need this done in three weeks you're right right cool let's go get it done you know and if you you know, you're churning out character after character after character, you're going to improve. <laughs> so, sorry, I've gone off on the tandem again. But, um, but yeah, it's... No, no ten this, this is a tangent-tolerant zone. <laughs> so this is great. Cool. Um, and, and, you know, that's important because uh, you're talking about, you know, getting out there, doing your work, you're going to get better as you kind of get it. And I think, you know, it's important to remind people that they... they a lot of times, especially artists, we think we need to be able to do the job before we get the job. Yeah. And, uh, no. you know, that, <laughs> that's like, oh, you know, before I'm going to sit down and sculpt Michelangelo's Pieta, I need to be able to do Michelangelo's Pieta. But Michelangelo wasn't for Michelangelo because of some magical, you know, fairy came down and gifted him. You know, that, that dude worked. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> He's legendary for his work. So how much work you know, should somebody be expected to do? What should, if I want to be a game artist, you know, do, does that mean I don't get my weekends or does that mean that I do get my weekends and, you know, I can do this like every two hours, you know, every couple of days or what is it, what, what does it look like? Um, it's, I think when you're, um, I've, I've kind of changed views on this quite a lot. So, um, oh. I, when I was at university, I uh, I was a bit of a sado. I never went out drinking or anything like that. I literally was in my bedroom trying to learn anatomy, trying to do characters, doing studies. And at the time, I didn't have a girlfriend either. I'm married now, <laughs> but um, I I put my all into into that, and I because I was single and I didn't really have anything to do I I I did that now saying that mm -hmm. I I think you have you have to put in the study if you want to if you want to receive like 
the good stuff basically but yeah. as i've got as i've gotten older i'm still i'm i'm still doing stuff all the time i i try to at least do a couple of couple of hours a day whether it's in my lunch doing lunch crunch you know just sculpting or just studying or watching tutorials it's i i mean i know i i mean i did um i did carlos quante's uh uh drawing class and man that guy like he lives breathes sleeps eats he he this is all he can think about and yeah. you know he he's like up at seven and finishes at four in the morning and you know this guy is insane and i think there's a it's a special breed of person to be like that and yeah. i think you could you can I, I mean i don't know how he does it it's it's, it's inspiring um, I think my wife would have a problem if I did that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I was but, just literally about to say I, I haven't. I know Carlos. But I haven't met his wife, but I think his wife deserves some sainthood at this oh, point. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. You know, his I, work ethic is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm 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 very lucky. My um, my wife really does understand like how important this is to me, and um, I I think she my wife deserves a medal because. Uh, like the amount of times I'm like sitting here just sculpting on something and she's sitting in the other room watching TV and that, that does it in the back of my head thing like oh you know I should be going to sit with her but I should be sculpting you know it's uh, you, you need to you know you need to have that balance because at the end of the day life is short and it's the memories that you build with people that are gonna are gonna be like your legacy in a way you know because hmm. yeah your artwork will be you know I, I don't know if it's gone to the stage this day and age where there'll be michelangelo's and da vinci's are we the michelangelo's and da vinci's of the time i don't know is there too much artwork now out there i don't know but you know we do it because we love it <laughs> we don't do it because we want to be the next da vinci we do it because we enjoy doing it but um yeah, I really think you need to have that balance in life because it's you, you need to enjoy yourself and you need people around you to enjoy life with you. So, yeah, as I said, you just need that balance. <laughs> Ashley, how do people find you? Your art station? Uh, yeah, they can hook me up on art station. Um, I've got a website. I noticed. As well, I noticed your about page on your art station is missing your website. Ooh, is it so you may want to throw that in there oh yes i shall um but yeah you can just hook me up on uh if i can spell my name <laughs> <laughs> um ashleysparling.com so there's um there's some stuff on there and um yeah and uh, some really exciting and scary stuff going on right here <laughs> so hmm yep and um, you've, like I said, you've got a, you've got a class coming up. That big click me button will take you into yeah. a webinar. I think you got going on this Saturday, right? Yes. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'm putting together. We'll click it. Um, let's not listen to that guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So um, I put together a um, a, a hair course. And because I know it's, as I keep saying, it's one of like the hardest things that you can do as a character artist. And uh, I really want to share my journey and my pipeline of how I create hair. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know, I, as I said, I know it's like a topic. It's starting to come about and people are starting to talk about it. But I think the more information that you have, the more you can go ahead and build your own path in creating hair. And um, a lot of the techniques is stuff that I did use in um, on uh, uh, Assassin's Creed. As I said, we did mm -hmm. have the hair tool, but when I was first doing hair, I kind of did this pipeline. And I think it works really well. It's easy to understand um we have a 
I've I've got a, a theory in there <laughs> as well, which um, I really think it will help help guide people on the right routes of creating hair. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> so uh, awesome. I don't I don't know how much I should say or how much I should leave it to you guys to That's just good. sign up and click that little sign up button and get some free yeah. content. Because that's that's uh, yeah. that's that's the thing as well. There's uh, there's free content on there to get you guys started if you don't want to do the full course. But it will be cool if you did want to do the full course. I'll be make me very happy, and then we can get to know each other, and you can hear me go off on tandems like this. No, <laughs> no I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm excited, you know, and I, and I should mention uh, Ashley's in the um, the influencer method course um, with me, which is how I know about this this thing coming yeah. up. Yeah. So, you know, Ryan's it's really been a, Ryan's been an awesome help, like trying to get this up and running, and you know his his mentorship on this. I I really couldn't have done this without without you. So I want to do a big thank you to you, Ryan, because yeah, Thanks. it's for one, it gave me the confidence to do it as well, because I'm I yeah. I get quite nervous with this type of stuff. So yeah, so thank you, thank awesome. you, Ryan. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you know, for me, the reason why I want the boot campers, the guys who are here with us live right now, to see this too, is because my hope is that you guys are all doing this pretty soon too, um, and sharing your passion because you know the whole idea of um, of being a, uh, a teacher and and passing your knowledge on, you know, I think it's important that we all do that much earlier than maybe they used to do. Um, so let's head back over to your, your art station. Um, that's one thing I want to say as well. Um, yeah. uh, a lot of the time when I I find I, I improve better when I'm teaching, it sounds so stupid. <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, for example, um, when I was very first put, put on doing feedback for outsourcers, it's kind of you, you're looking at other people's work and you're, you're having to like crits other people's work but then you mm-hmm. see stuff and it's like oh that's cool I, I you know I could I could do that in my model or you know so I really I this is something that I when I tried to do the boot camps I, I was trying to get my students to try and do was feedback on each other because yeah when you're in the industry you you have art reviews and you sit down with your team and you know your your work does get pulled apart sometimes and it can be like disheartening but it's nothing against you it's because there's this quality bar that has to be hit because you all have to be at that same level of quality so it's nothing against your artwork it's if anything it's people wanting to help you push to be the best artist you are and i think if you're if you're learning now and doing this in the boot camps and drawing over each other's work and you know you know feedback in not not silly feedback like you know keep it keep it um or what's the word i've forgotten the word respectable um Mm -hmm. i think that's something that um i it would be interesting to see the next load of students do that type of thing because I think you for one you'll get confident in doing it and then when you're in the industry and you have to you get suddenly put in a meeting with an art director and the rest of your team and you're told to crit people's work it will be less scary for you and you know you could pick up something that your fellow students uh, your fellow um yes other students uh, didn't see so you know it gives you the 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 experience of giving people feedback and it helps helps them because they might miss something so yeah that's funny we've actually started doing that rashid and josh have both started doing that is rashid here yeah rashid's here and then uh, do i have josh here no josh is i think in a different time zone uh mr wallace have uh, started doing the peer reviews as well cool so you know, I think it's incredibly powerful to see people do that, and um, and I think it's important to remind everybody, you know, that you have something to give, and so give. Don't hide. Yeah. Don't keep it in yourself. You know, give. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Help me grow. Ashley, man, it's been great talking to you. Thank it's you been so a much for being here and sharing your journey. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> cool. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks.